Hi, my name is Pam Denny. I'm the designer and architect of the Maximo BI or Business Intelligence Tools. Today's demo is part three in a series where we explore the QBR or ad hoc reporting functionality in Maximo 7.6 in more detail. In part one of our series, we looked at the style tab. Part two was on the content tab. And today we're going to look at more detail in the calculate tab. The intention of these series is to increase your knowledge and understanding of the QBR functionality in Maximo 7.6. Creating reports on the fly can greatly reduce the number of custom reports you need to create and maintain. So that's why it's so important for us to make sure that you have all the information to create these very powerful reports. The other thing I want to highlight is this series supplements our existing Maximo 7.6 recordings. There's a number of recordings today on ad hoc reporting where you can specifically look at the new features like summaries, like the preview limits and the expression library. But what the intention here again is for this series is to give you that overall view of all the information. The other thing I want to highlight is the new spreadsheet that we have available. And this is for Maximo 7.6 ad hoc reporting. It was specifically designed as a spreadsheet or a worksheet to have different tabs that correlate to different to the corresponding ad hoc tabs. So for example, on the style tab, you can review all the information related to style. I'm going to focus here on the Calculate tab, and I'm going to highlight a few key business rules as we go through the demo today. And this uh, spreadsheet is also available on the Wiki site. So let's start and let's go over here to Ad Hoc Reporting. And what I have is I'm in Work Order Tracking, and I want to get a better understanding of my work that's in Backlog. So I'm going to come right over here to the Calculate tab. And one of the key things that I want to highlight is some of the consistent data that you'll see from tab to tab. And also some of the data, hmm, there we go, sorry, I might have a little bit slow on my connection there. <clears throat> but also some of the things that are unique to each one of the tabs. Uh, for the Calculate tab, you're going to see some of the things that you see from other tabs, like the work order object, or excuse me, the work report object structure or the hierarchy of database objects. And you navigate through this object structure to add the individual attributes or, or single attributes to your expression. But one of the things that is very different in the Calculate tab is the Available field section. The UI is set up the same way, but notice up here the number of values. For Available fields, I have 92. Well, let me move over here to Work Order Details in the Content tab, so the same parent object. And let's take a look at what that looks like. I've got 153 attributes. Work Order Details. Well, why is there a difference? Well, the difference is on the Content, or excuse me, on the Calculate tab, we only deal with numeric fields. We can't, for example, take a description field from work order tracking and subtract it from another text field. All right? So you can't take a text minus a text field and expect an expression. So we can only work with numeric data types. What are those types? Well, let's come over here to our spreadsheet. I'm on the Calculate tab. Talked a little bit about the categories. But let's come down here under Available Fields. See over here this data type, and this is so important to have this understanding that only numeric types can be used in expressions. And what are those data types? They're all listed right here. And as you can read, amounts, different types of integers, time, duration, yarn, etc. That is why when we come over here that only those types are available. If I came in here and I was really thinking that I could get a description field in there, I can sort on description and what's going to display to me is null value, right? There's nothing available. Well, let's try working and building with our calculations and I'm going to grab uh, the target field. I'm going to start looking at some of our target finish dates or target completion dates. 
So I can use the same UI that's available on the Content tab. I'm just going to double click, but notice carefully what happens down in the expression area when I add that target finish. <clears throat> it's going to add it and it comes in the attribute or the database value, right? It's not in the, the, um, the label value or the description of the attribute. It's the actual attribute name. But notice here the data type came down with it. And so that we're trying to give you that head start as you create your calculation as to what the data type might be. The expression may or may not end up using that exact data type, but again, in some cases it does, so we're giving you that head, head start or head jump. Now one of the things I can do, and sometimes if I'm lazy I do this, is uh, I didn't really add this on my content tab, so I can just come down here and add my target completion date on the calculate tab. I'm just adding a single attribute. So again, that happens many times. Maybe you want to mix up the order. Maybe you forgot to add it on the content tab. You want it here. So when you click preview, it's going to take that value. It doesn't do anything to it. It just brings the value from the database and displays it in the individual ad hoc report. Now I didn't add any content. I just, uh, I'm utilizing the default list tab persistent fields, but over here, here's my target completion date. It's a date and a time field. Well, let's work with this a little bit more. A couple other business rules that you might be interested in. You know, if you really, really like that target completion date, you can add it as many times as you want. And I can also add, uh, let's see, make sure I type this the exact same way. If I want that same exact expression for that same exact field and that name, I can go ahead and do that too. It lets you do that. Well, in most cases, I probably won't want to do that. I'm going to actually delete that. Let's try manipulating or working with our target finish date instead. So let's come over here. Let's make sure that it brings in the data type because I'm always unsure of what I might want to do. So I've got a target complete date and uh, I think I want to just subtract out the current date to get the number of days overdue. Number of days overdue. Let's check our test expression. Is he going to let me do that? He gives me an error. What's our error saying? Expression contains a keyword, tells me what it is, that's not a field in the category or a defined expression keyword. Well, it means that current isn't an attribute. Uh, from work order tracking, and it's not a defined expression keyword. Oh, that's right. You know, I have to always select either an attribute or from my expression library. I can't type in on the fly. Why can't we type in on the fly? We want to make sure that you're not doing any um, updates, deletes, modification to the database that aren't allowed. So again, the user can only select from the objects and the attributes up here that he has access to or from the expression library. Well, let me look at the expression library, see what might be available for a current date. Um, let me move this down a little bit. Target completion date is a date time, so I want a date time variable. Oh, perfect. Let's grab that. And as soon as I add that value, I'm going to test my expression again. Uh, let's see, test it. Does he like it this time? He says, okay, you followed the rules. It's, it's uh, oh, good to go. So now it says um, my test expression was valid. Now let me add my expression. Now in this case, oh, I'm getting another error. And the reason I'm getting an error is it says the calculation does not match the specified data type. If I want to calculate a date or a date time, I must specify a specific value. Uh, that's right. So again, what I'm doing here is when I'm subtracting out a date or a date time, it may not necessarily result in that data type. In this case, it's going to result in an integer. And how do I know that it's going to result in an integer? Well, it's very dependent on the database type you use. I'm in an environment that's using an Oracle database. So I know when I subtract out two integers from an Oracle database, it's an in, it's an integer data type. I don't know if I said that right, so let me try again. When you subtract two dates, 
it's going to result in an inner data type. So let me add my expression this time. It's going to validate both the expression and that the data type that you've selected is correct. So it's going to come down here and add it and let's take a look at that. And as my report is going to display over here, so I'm adding additional expression value. This was the target completion date that I added over here. Did I click submit? I don't remember if I, I thought I clicked preview. Oh, here he goes. Um, so now it's probably going to preview twice. Always remember to be patient. Um, so I'm going to come over here and what I've added again is a second expression. And my second expression was for my number of days overdue. Let's take a look at this. Number of days overdue. Wow. Got some really uh, old work orders here, but yet I'm dealing with Max Demo Database. So um, that I understand is why those are all overdue. So let me clean this up a little bit. And before I do that, I just want to highlight again, let's go back to the spreadsheet and let's talk about some of these rules and what we're going to start to see. And I'm going to navigate down here again, down here in the data type. And everything that I just showed you is so important. And again, this is one thing that you want to make sure your users understand is that when they're creating the expressions, really pay attention to the resultant data type. And in this case, you know, you have to make sure that if your expression is going to result in a number, which is the case that I had, right? What are the number of days overdue? You got to make sure you're selecting the applicable data type. If you're interested, why that is so important, remember we're building a report design file on the fly. This was previously done in the report designer. And if a report developer was going to do this in the individual report designer, if he's creating this calculation, he's got to pull the correct data set method that matches up to the result of the expression. So again, we've got to make sure as we're doing this on the fly that we're mapping the Maximo data days type to the correct data set method so we can make sure we deliver the right content in the report. So again, this is from the report developer guide and that's why it's so important and why this all comes into play. Well, let me go back over here and I want to clean this up a little bit. So I'm going to click edit. Um, I don't really like looking at a lot of negative numbers. Um, it's, I just think it's, it's very sad. So I want to put a different way um, to look at this. I'm just going to come over here and go. There we go. Um, so that's going to give me the number of days overdue, but you know, I want to clean this up a bit and I'm going to make sure that this is going to say um, the number of weeks overdue. Let's try that. So let me come over here. Oops, weeks, W-E-E-K-S. Yep, there we go. Let's add my expression. I think editing is so powerful. Oh, doesn't like it. Why doesn't it like it? I think because I need a space over there. <clears throat> Let me try that again. Divided by, oh, I know why it doesn't like it. I forgot the division symbol. I try that. It's always important to uh, make sure that your mathematical expression is correct. So yeah, I liked it that time. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and preview that. So while that's running, just wanna highlight a couple other things. Um, as we've talked through the demo, um, we talked about the report object structures, talked about how important the data types are in your available field section. Down in here in the expression, we built a couple expressions, showed how the data type defaults up here. One of the other things that I tried to do was to use a value outside of the expression library. So remember, you can only use in your expression either attributes or functions that are available to you in the expression library. You can't add functions or features on the fly. And that the result in data type from the expression is extremely critical. And it may be different than the different attributes or values that you have within your expression. And again, we, we noticed or uh, highlighted that with our number of weeks or number of days overdue expression. In this case, we had two date time values. One was an attribute, one came directly from the expression, and the resultant data type is an integer. 
really, really powerful functionality here in the Calculate tab. You know, to create this information, get it so quickly, you know, all of a sudden knowing that, you know, work order 4200 is 204 weeks overdue. Oh my gosh, I've got this really, really powerful information and now I can act on it. So with that, I'd like to thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you.